A tensiometer is a useful tool for monitoring the soil moisture status under vegetable and berry crops. This video demonstrates how to build your own tensiometer based on a University of California Cooperative Extension Salinas Valley blog post by Michael Kahn. You may also refer to the do-it-yourself tensiometer brochure developed by the Resource Conservation District of Monterey County. Tensiometers can be easily read by irrigators in the field and they operate without electricity. For detailed guidelines on how to use tensiometers, refer to the How to Use a Tensiometer brochure developed by the Resource Conservation District of Monterey County. See the link in the video description for more information. You can build your own tensiometer using the materials shown here. Materials needed include a ceramic cup, one half inch PVC pipe, a one half inch by one half inch by one half inch PVC T, a one half inch PVC slip by one quarter inch female thread bushing, a vacuum gauge, and a rubber stopper. You will also need a tape measure, 120 grit sandpaper, PVC glue and purple primer, thread sealing tape, painter's tape, nitrile or latex gloves, a PVC saw, and a miter box. Use small 4 ounce bottles of primer and glue because the brush is best size for these components. Measure the PVC pipe sections in the following lengths. For a one foot depth tensiometer, measure the top shaft to four inches and the bottom shaft to at least 12 inches. For a two foot depth tensiometer, measure the top shaft to four inches and the bottom shaft to at least 24 inches. The bottom shaft length can be adjusted as needed to customize the tensiometer depth or to allow for the tensiometer to rise more or less above the surface of the bed when installed for ease of observation. Consider the crop type, field conditions, and cultivation practices to determine the ideal length for the tensiometer. For example, Tensiometers installed in strawberry fields should have a shorter top shaft and be installed low in the bed to avoid impacts from bug vacuums. In taller crops, such as celery, it may be beneficial to install the tensiometer higher in the bed so that it can be easily observed as the crop matures. Today we are making a 12 inch tensiometer with a four inch top shaft and a 12 inch bottom shaft. Cut the PVC to the appropriate length using the PVC saw and miter box. When cutting the end that will connect to the ceramic cup, it is especially important to make a flat cut to prevent leaks when glued to the ceramic cup. After cutting the pipe, use your fingers or a tool to remove the plastic debris and clean up the rough edges. Wear clean gloves when handling the ceramic cup to avoid clogging the pores of the ceramic cup and to protect your hands from the glue and primer. Check that the ceramic cup fits into the bottom of the PVC shaft and is aligned straight. If the pipe is too loose, select another section of pipe. If the cup cannot be inserted at least one third to halfway into the PVC tube, gently sand the neck of the cup and test the fit. Stop sanding once the neck of the cup can be inserted partially into the tube. Each PVC pipe may have a slightly different inside diameter, so the sanded cup and its tube should be kept together prior to gluing. Be careful not to over sand the cup or the fit between the neck and the PVC shaft will be loose and will not bond well when glued. The fit between the neck of the cup and the PVC should be very tight such that moderate force is needed to insert the cup into the first third to one half of the PVC shaft. If the end of the PVC shaft is not square, recut the end with the miter box at a 90 degree angle. Grip the cup by the PVC neck as much as possible when handling 
to avoid placing excess stress on the ceramic slash PVC joint. Wrap the bottom of the PVC shaft and the top of the ceramic cup with painter's tape to prevent glue from coating the outside of the ceramic cup. In a well-ventilated location, apply PVC primer to both the interior of the PVC shaft and the outside of the PVC top of the ceramic cup. Then apply gray PVC glue to both surfaces and push the parts together. Slightly twist the parts immediately after gluing to assure a good bond before the glue begins to set. Then hold in place for about 30 seconds to one minute. Wipe away excess glue around the finished joint with a paper towel. Wrap the one quarter inch male threads of the tension gauge with pipe thread sealing tape about three to four times. Then hand tighten the vacuum gauge to the one quarter inch by one half inch bushing. Do not over tighten the PVC or the PVC T may crack over time. The thread seal tape must be applied in the same direction as the threads or it will not bind. Glue the bushing into the one half PVC T with the tension gauge facing toward an open end of the T so that it will face upward when installed in the field. Next, glue the top and bottom shafts into the one half inch PVC slip T using the PVC primer and glue. Remember that the shorter top shaft will be installed on the side of the PVC T facing the tension gauge and the bottom shaft will be installed on the side facing away from the tension gauge. After inserting each of these parts into the T, slightly twist them and hold in place for about 30 seconds while the glue sets. After the unit is fully assembled, the painter's tape can be removed. Soak the tensiometer overnight with the ceramic cup fully immersed in water to saturate the pores. Fill the tensiometer fully with degassed distilled water. The water can be degassed by boiling it and allowing it to cool. Gently tap the tension gauge to dislodge any air bubbles trapped in the neck of the PVC T. Insert the tapered end of the rubber stopper into the top end of the tensiometer with a slight twist to firmly seal the stopper. Note that a loose stopper is the main cause for vacuum leaks. Apply a paper towel and or allow the completed tensiometer to dry in a sunny location and observe the increase in tension observed on the gauge. The tension should increase to 50 centibar within a day of drying in open air. If the tension does not increase, there may be a leak in the tensiometer and it must be located and repaired before use in the field.